Hi there. This video will cover some of the functions and methods on how to take an impulse response measurement in SMART. SMART version 9 Suite Edition includes the impulse response module. You can access it by clicking on the impulse button on the top right corner above the SPL readout, or by using the hotkey I. Before we look at the features in SMART, Let's first chat about what is an impulse response measurement and why it is used for room acoustics. An impulse response is used to measure the output of a system after a short burst of energy is put into a system. For room acoustics, the room is our system. It gets excited with a sound source and the direct sound and later arriving energy is recorded for analysis. Imagine a stone dropped into a bucket of water. The initial impact results in waves moving outwards towards the edge of the bucket. When the waves reach the edge, the energy pushes back towards the center of the bucket. This continues until the waves lose momentum and the water returns to a stable state. Sound energy in a room is similar. When a sound source excites a space, the sound energy travels outwards based on directivity of the source. As it comes in contact with surfaces and boundaries in the space, one of three or a combination of three things can happen to that sound energy. Absorption, reflection, and or transmission. For example, a certain material will absorb some of the sound, reflect a bit back into the room and the rest will be transmitted through the material. The type and construction of the material where the sound is incident upon will determine what happens and the results can also be frequency dependent. So what does an impulse response have to do with a bucket of water? The impulse response tells us the characteristics of a room. One way it does so is by providing a reverberation time decay rate more specifically called an RT60. How long in seconds does the sound energy take to drop 60 decibels after the direct sound level has been measured? If the decay time is long, then the room is very reverberant or referred to as a live room. If it is short, there is little reverberation and the room is referred to as dead. Traditionally, sound sources to create the impulse response were manual devices, such as bursting a balloon, clapping your hands or two pieces of wood together, or even gunshots firing blanks. The response of a room is not volume dependent. It will react the same proportionally at loud or soft levels. This means that the decay rate is not affected by the loudness of the sound source. But better data can be gathered when the sound source is significantly louder than the noise floor. Modern techniques use electronically produced sounds to excite the space via a loudspeaker. Smart has various options for sound source material and methods to capture an impulse response. The Smart IR interface has a similar layout to the real-time interface. On the left, there is the data bar where all captured impulse responses are stored. On the right is the control bar, the signal generator, and the SPL window. At the top is the impulse response navigation window, and right in the middle is the main graph area. SMART can complete direct and indirect impulse response measurements. The direct method requires an external sound source, where the indirect method needs a transfer function and a loudspeaker. For both, we have to set up the input for the microphone. IR mode requires a transfer function, so a microphone input and a reference input is paired together in a measurement engine. To do this, there are multiple ways to create a new transfer function. If you are creating a TF function for the first time, in the control bar, there will be a button that says plus TF engine. You can click this button and a pop-up window will open up. 
just above the plus TF engine is the measurement configuration fly out window button. It looks like a hammer and a spanner. Clicking on this menu will fly out where all previously configured inputs will appear. At the bottom of this menu, there is a button to create a new TF measurement. You can also access this menu by going to config at the top left and selecting measurement config. Take note of the keyboard shortcut. This will open up the flyout menu and at the bottom you can select new TF measurement. Once you have selected to create a new TF measurement, the small pop-up window will appear. Here you have to select two inputs from your active audio interfaces. Give it a name and select the device where your microphone is plugged into. The measurement channel is the channel where your microphone is plugged into your interface. And the reference channel is where you are receiving the loop back signal from your signal generator. We need the reference channel to complete the transfer function. If you are using more than one microphone, select Create Plus. You will be able to configure the next microphone's transfer function. If you are done, select Create and Close. You will note that in the flyout menu, the newly created transfer function engine has been created at the top here. And in the control bar, the measurement engine that you just created appears there with a color. If your microphone is plugged in, the M meter will have some level on it. To check, clap your hands or make some noise close to the mic. If the M meter goes up, you are good to go. Above the transfer function engine you just created, there is a record and a play icon. Press the circle to activate record mode. When you are ready to make an impulse, press the play button and recording will commence. Once you have excited your space, with a clap or a burst, press the stop button to stop the recording. The captured results will be displayed in the navigation and main graph areas. To store it, press the spacebar and name the file. Now you can access it again at a later stage. This method does not consider FFT size and averaging. The indirect method uses the transfer function to determine the impulse response. This means that we can use constant noise to extract an impulse response. When you created the transfer function, you had to select a second input as a reference signal. This should be a duplicate of the signal you are sending to the loudspeaker. First, we have to decide what noise we want the loudspeaker to reproduce to excite the room. There are three types of noises that work for impulse response mode in SMART. Sign sweep, which is a sine wave tone that moves up the frequency spectrum at a determined speed. Random noise, this is generally full spectrum pink noise. And pseudo random noise, this is a time-specific noise that is looped according to a selected FFT window size. For each of these, we also have to decide how long the recorded impulse response must be. This is done by selecting an FFT window size. The various window sizes have the time in milliseconds indicated. For now, we will not select any averaging and discuss this later on. Let's choose a FFT window of 128K, which is just under 3 seconds long. For all three methods, we do not need the record button enabled, and just the play button needs to be pressed to start the measurement. Before starting any measurement, enable the signal generator and check that your measurement and reference inputs are both working and receiving signal. It is ideal to have the levels equal and just before the yellow meter, clipping or too low levels will not give good data. For our sound source, we'll start with pink sweep. You'll notice a tick box that says 
triggered by IR. This will ensure that the sweep starts when we start the measurement and also that the length of the sweep is as long as our FFT window. Check your levels before taking the measurement. Start the measurement by selecting the play button. There will be one cycle of the sign sweep and then the captured impulse response will appear in the navigation and main graph. To save the impulse response, press the spacebar and give it a name. Hide the saved measurement by clicking on the color icon in the data bar. Go to the signal generator and select noise as the sound source. Also make sure random is selected as the noise type. Test the sound levels and press the play button to start the measurement. Once completed, the impulse response will show in the graphs. Save this captured measurement and give it a name. In the data bar, hide the random noise trace. Head back to the signal generator and in the noise type, select pseudo random. Make sure that drop IR data window is selected. Check your levels and press the start button to start taking the impulse response measurement. Once completed, it will appear on the graphs. Press the spacebar and name your trace. Now we have three separate measurements with three separate methods.